Well, hey there everybody, Lisa from A Menu For You. Welcome to my Facebook Live. So thank you for all of you that voted for what you wanted to see me make. It was a really tight race between the meatballs and the pasta last night, I have to say. Like, it was constantly tied. One would go ahead, then the other would be tied. But meatballs are the ones that won out. So I'm gonna show you how to make my Spanish meatballs, which are Super easy, there are loads of substitutions, so feel free to ask any questions in the comments, or if you don't have a certain ingredient, tell me what you do have, or just say you don't have a certain ingredient, I'm happy to come up with substitutions for you. So, first off, I'm going to get the meat out. The recipe calls for um, beef and pork, but I'm just gonna be using pork today. So I'm cutting the recipe in half because I do have ground beef, but I'm gonna save it for a different recipe. So I've split it because you'll understand why I'm gonna have a little bit of like Facebook Live magic later today. Um, Close the TV. Just turn it off. Cool. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, it's life right now, right? Like. Hopefully you guys are all doing well. I wanna know what you guys are watching because I am looking for new shows to watch. I think we ordered a bunch of games and puzzles, so I would love to hear how you are doing. And I also have always worked from home and my husband also works from home. So if you are finding yourself working from home with a loved one or roommates, spouse, and you want tips, just drop them in the comments. Okay, so we're gonna get started. I've got about a half a pound of pork right here. And we're gonna toss in some of the other goodies, but first, what makes these meatballs so different and unique is that instead of panko or breadcrumbs, which you usually, usually find in meatballs, we're gonna put bechamel. And bechamel actually makes them even lighter, so, so good. And bechamel is a really versatile sauce. You use it in lasagna, you use it in mac and cheese, and since there's a lot of pasta making going on these days, I thought I would show you guys how to make Bechamel as well. So come this way. And I will show you. So first, bechamel is three ingredients. So it's butter, flour, and milk. And I was thinking too, and this is also a really good alternative if you find yourself not having panko or not having breadcrumbs. This is also a really good alternative because odds are, even when it's not a pandemic, you have flour, butter, and milk. And I highly recommend using whole milk. I don't think, you need, you need the richer fat of the whole milk to really make a lovely, like, luxurious, smooth, creamy bechamel. It might work with 2%, but I highly recommend using whole milk. So first off, we're going to, on low heat, we're gonna melt some butter. And the recipe calls for two, this goes really quickly, by the way. When you make bechamel sauce, you don't wanna ever step away from the stove because it does go really quickly. So here I'll go. I got my son home, so I figured I would put him to work, helping me with the video. So we get that melting. Well, that melts. I'm gonna measure in a tablespoon. So we measure a tablespoon of flour and just set it to the side. So there's a tablespoon of flour because once the butter melts, we're going to stir in an equal part of flour. Get that going. I'm gonna go get the milk out of the fridge. Once you see how easy bechamel sauce is to make, you're gonna make it all the time. Sorry, but I'm gonna take it in my fridge. Alrighty. Get the whole milk out. This is almost, this goes really quickly. Okay, so now that the butter is melted, the butter's all melted, we're gonna sprinkle the flour over it. And then you wanna cook for like a minute because you don't want your vegetable sauce to taste floury. So you just want to cook it for about a minute. And it cooks that flour out and it's gonna, the flour is what's gonna provide a thicker, thickener to your vegetable. So you're just gonna, and a whisk, whisk is definitely a key. You don't want to, you don't want a spoon because you don't want your vegetable to be lumpy. So a whisk definitely helps with that. So you just want to whisk it away. If your fire on your stove is too hot, you can take it off. My burners tend to run on the really hot side. And it thickens really quickly. It's already starting to thicken. I'm gonna wait just 
because I have the recipe, I'm just gonna wait like another second. If your mixture starts to brown, see it's starting to get almost like a little caramely looking, that's perfectly okay because it just makes your vegetable taste a little nuttier. So we're going to Milk going here. And then off the fire, you want to add the milk. So let's do that. That's kind of what you want it to look like. So it's kind of, it's not really terribly thick yet, but it will be. You want to add your milk. Give it another little whisk. And then back on the fire. And then just whisk until it gets thick, and then we're going to set it aside. And again, this is going to happen really quickly. It will take a little bit longer because odds are you're going to make the full recipe at home. And meatball recipes, what I love about them is that they're really easy. And this recipe you can make early in the day. Any meatball recipe you can make early in the day because meatballs set up better if you have them rest in the refrigerator for a little bit. So at least an hour. Okay, see? You can see it's actually... See how it goes really quickly. And it's a nice creamy consistency. I think this is what you want your vegetable sauce to look like. And if you're just tuning in, I'm making spinach meatballs and what I use instead of pancake or breadcrumbs is vegetable sauce because now's the time where you probably have flour, butter, and milk, but you might not have breadcrumbs or panko. So we're gonna set this aside and I will show you how we put the rest of the ingredients together because you don't want, that's too hot and you're gonna be mixing this with your hands. So we're gonna add, this is about a tablespoon and a half of parsley. We're gonna add an egg. This actually is half an egg, like I told you. I'm cutting this, I guess I cut this in a third. Just do a little less. We do a little salt, a little pinch of pepper. And the recipe calls for sweet paprika, but if you follow me, you know that I'm a huge fan of smoked paprika. So we're going to do, the recipe calls for a teaspoon, so we're going to do a quarter teaspoon because, yeah, I'm quartering this. Okay, quarter teaspoon. So if you have any questions or if you don't have some of these ingredients, let me know. And I'm happy to give you ideas for substitutions. These meatballs, you use beef and pork, but you can use any ground meat. You can use chicken, you can use veal, you can use, um, what is it, a veal, chicken, am I missing a meat? Beef, no, there's beef already in here. Any ground meat, any ground meat works. Veal, it's another one. And you can also do a combination. I would do equal parts meat. So if you're doing, you know, if you want to include a third meat, so if you want to do beef, pork, and veal, which actually would make really good meatballs, just do a third of each. Just do a third of each when you add this. So, um, okay, and what else do we put in here? So we've got the, oh, I wanna show you a trick too. So I put a little garlic in here, but I love using my microblade for the garlic because I find it's easier than just mincing it up, not to mention it makes the pieces of garlic even smaller. So you don't have to worry about getting a big piece of garlic in your mouth which would be not ideal. So I just kind of run it across the microblade. Watch out for your fingers. Oops, that one's not coming out very well. Let's get a bigger one. Sometimes a bigger piece of garlic. That is one thing I'm running low on is garlic. I have like a ridiculous amount of toilet paper, even though I did not hoard the toilet paper. I always buy a bunch of toilet paper but I do need more garlic. So I think I might have to place an order. I've definitely been using Instacart. Have you guys all been using Instacart to get your groceries lately? I love you, Instacart. Another really good idea if you're looking for groceries too is I love Imperfect Produce and they are a company that focuses on lowering the amount of food waste. There we go. So like for example, a lot of farms and ranches they'll have produce that they can't sell to markets because it's not deemed pretty enough. So the apples aren't pretty enough and perfect enough or lemons or onions. And it's still perfectly delicious. It's still perfectly edible. It'll be amazing in whatever you cook it in. And so you can order it from Imperfect Produce and they also have uh, increased their number of pantry items too. Okay, so I always kind of go in there and 
get the rest of it out. All right, so that's the garlic. Fingers off. Um, another thing with meatballs is you need to mix them by hand. A spoon just doesn't, it's not gonna get them as light. To keep meatballs really lovely and light, you just want to mix everything, all the ingredients together until it's just mixed. And I feel like with a spoon, it just kind of roughly mixes everything together. With your hand, you have more control. So that's what I like to do. Alrighty, so we've got, I just need to double check the recipe. Oh my gosh, how did I forget the wine? Yes, there's wine in here too. And now, the recipe calls for Spanish wine, which I think is why they're called Spanish meatballs, but I don't have any Spanish wine, but I have Chardonnay. So whatever wine you have, whatever white wine you have, if you have a lighter wine, you can use like a Sauvignon Blanc, which would be wonderful. Um, you can use the Pinot. I don't have any. So in goes the Chardonnay, which will still be really good. Okay, so we've got the, if you're just turning in, these are the Spanish meatballs. There is pork in here, egg, parsley. I just put in some wine, garlic, paprika, salt, and pepper. And now we're gonna add the bechamel sauce and then mix it all. Spoon that in. So the meatballs are gonna have a lighter, um, kind of almost a lighter texture, but by letting them chill in the fridge, they'll kind of they'll kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not seize up is the wrong word. They will, it will, they won't seem as wet when you actually form them into meatballs. They won't seem as loose. So, so you just want to just very, almost kind of folding them in with your hands. You want to make sure that the ingredients are all incorporated, but you don't want to go in there and like crazy over mix. So just kind of gently fold, fold everything in. And these can be made early in the day. So you can make them in the morning and set them in the fridge and then form them right before you cook them. Or you can set them in the fridge for a couple hours, then form them into balls, stick them back in the fridge until you're ready to cook. Okay, so this is all done. See, that's what they look like. It's not too bad. So you can see that it's a little bit of a looser mix than if you used panko, but that loose that looseness is gonna translate into the most light, like melt in your mouth, not tough, not like hockey puck meatballs, but lovely light meatballs. So I'm gonna go wash my hands, and then we're gonna cover and stick that in the fridge, ideally for at least an hour. Feel free to pop any questions you have. Like I said, if you have even questions about stuff you have hanging out in your pantry that you have no idea what to do with or turn how to turn them into meals, leave me a comment. If you're not watching this live, if you're watching um, the repeat, what is wrong with my word these days? If you're watching the replay, if you're watching the replay and this isn't live anymore, feel free to drop a comment. I'm happy to. I will be going back and checking comments later too. So, oops. We are going to put this and cover it and stick it in the fridge. And like I said, ideally, you want it to set up. So ideally for at least like an hour. So this goes back in the fridge. And then the magic of Facebook Live will take out meatballs I put together. when I get the challenging by showing like my jammed fridge. There we go. There's your for everything. I usually like to have my fridge really organized, but now that I have both kids home and they're older, like my son is 21, my daughter is 17, they eat a lot, so I'm having to, yeah, just my fridge is fuller these days. Okay, so now these are formed. What I like to do is there's two methods of cooking them. You can simply put them in a little bit of olive oil in a saucepan and cook them until they're nicely brown on all sides. But if you don't want the hassle of that, I love cooking them in the oven. And so my oven has been created to, I actually put it up to like 400, but you can do like 375 or 350 as well. You get like a little spoon so you can pour these. And you can make them as 
as big or as little as you want. I tend to make them on the smaller side because they cook faster. So here is, these have been hanging out in the fridge for like an hour and a half. So you can see that the mixture has, has firmed up a bit. It's not quite as loose, it's still a little loose. It's gonna be looser a bit um, from when you use panko. But the key to refrigerating the meat is also to make sure that they hold together. They hold together in their little ball shape when you cook them so much better, especially if you're cooking them on the stove. So I'm going to line this with parchment. And then I'm gonna just form the meatballs. I'm gonna get them in the oven. And while they cook, I'll show you how to make a super quick, easy marinara with one of the many canned jars of tomatoes you probably have hanging out in your house right now. Um, this recipe does say you can easily use, see, I just usually, a little spoonful, and then just roll them gently. And they are a little on the wet side, and that's totally natural. It's, it's the way they're supposed to be. And like I said, the smaller you make them, the faster they cook. Let's see. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, so the recipe calls for Rao's, Rao's, is that how you spell it? Or say it? Rao's marinara sauce, which I love. And I swear it's, you're hard pressed to make homemade. Are you, do you wanna raise the, there we go. I wanna get the meatballs. <laughs> okay, I'm like, yeah, that's, cool that's not, <laughs> thank you, Jack. Um, <laughs> um, so, Rao's is an amazing marinara sauce, and you would really be hard pressed to make homemade as good, but you can. So if you have Rao's, Rao's, um, you could absolutely use it. I would just heat it in a saucepan over the stove, um, bring it to like a really gentle simmer, and then after the meatballs, cook for a bit in your oven. You cook them in the oven. I usually cook them at 400. I usually cook them for about maybe about 10 minutes and I make sure I check on them and kind of roll them around it so they get nice and brown on all sides. And then I finish them off in the sauce. That's the key, like when you cook them, whether you're cooking them on the stove or in the oven, you're gonna, you're gonna be finishing them off in the sauce. And then it usually takes, I usually just simmer them in the sauce for like another 15 minutes. And I'll cut one open just to make sure it's cooked. So these are definitely gonna go in the oven. I love any kind of meatballs I usually put in the oven because I just, it's just less hassle. It's less cleanup too, and there's less oil splattering all over your stove and making a mess. So, oops, I am gonna try to make a couple of these maybe a smidge bigger so they can all fit on one tray. So if you're watching it and tune in line, make sure to say hi. Make sure to tell me like where you're from, where you're tuning in from, and if you have any questions, or if you just have any like quarantine tips, like what are you guys watching on TV? Have you found any like new TV shows to watch? Uh, we were watching, let's see, my daughter and I started watching Love is Blind. I felt like we were the only ones like pretty much on the planet that weren't watching it. Although that house is so good. Okay, 
so what we're going to do is put olive oil in here first. I'll show you my trick. It's olive oil and garlic is what you're going to start off with. So you're going to put a good amount, I think it's probably about half a cup of garlic. About half a cup, a little bit more of olive oil. And then I'm going to add some thinly sliced garlic. And I'm not going to turn the stove on yet. I'm going to turn the stove on when I have the garlic already in the pan. And I'm going to turn the stove on to like a low medium heat. And once the garlic starts sizzling and bouncing around a bit, then I add that to it. So this way it prevents the garlic from burning. Because once garlic burns, it's like there's no getting into that. It just blends a really kind of awful burnt flavor. There's no, there's really no sweet in it. So, and garlic burns really quickly. Now you can use, I have as many garlic cloves as you want. I usually tend to use between two and three. Um, if you don't like a lot of garlic, then just add less. Oops. If you like a ton of garlic, you can add more. It's kind of whatever you want. And as far as the tomatoes, you can add, I'm using puree because my son is not a huge chunky tomato fan. He likes his sauces pureed and his marinara sauce more smooth. So, but you can also use whole tomatoes and you can gently crush them in your hand when you add them if you like more like chunky bits in your marinara sauce. Um, you can also, if you have veggies that are looking sad and looking like they're on their last legs, like getting kind of wilty, like mushroom, zucchini, carrots, dice them up, you can saute them separately, add them to the marinara sauce. And if you have picky eaters, you can puree it or use an immersion blender they won't even know what's in it because that's what I used to do all the time when my kids were little. And trust me, they will not know what veggies you have put in. It's a great way to use up veggies that are in your fridge because they're not going to last forever and they will taste delicious in the marinara sauce. Okay, so this was this is about two cloves of garlic. So I'm going to stick it in the kind of scatter. And the garlic will cook down, so it'll actually, the flavor will mellow as it cooks. Okay, so let's throw it over, kind of the medium, medium heat, and I'm using, I love these, I love this brand, the San Marzano. Sento is also a really good brand. Sento and San Marzano, highly recommend. So yeah, so we're just gonna let this go. And as soon as it starts, when it starts bubbling and the garlic kind of starts jumping around, that means that the garlic has infused the oil with flavor. And then we'll add the tomatoes and then basically just bring it to a simmer. Now you can add fresh herbs. If I had fresh basil, I would absolutely chop some fresh basil. What I do have is I have dried basil. Actually, do I have dried basil? Dried basil? Let me see. I have some dried oregano. Let's see. I might have used, oh, Italian seasoning. I could probably use this. I think I might have used all of my, yeah, I think it's on the, it's on the list. I've got some time, but I'd rather have, let's see. Oh yeah, oregano, marjoram, thyme. Oh yeah, this would be really good. So tell, I'll use a little Italian herb seasoning. And because I'm using dried, dried herbs should go in first. If you're using fresh herbs, they go at the end of the sauce. Why? Because dried herbs need time to bloom because they're dried. And if you put them in at the end, they're not at the end of cooking, you're not gonna, allow them to bloom properly and infuse as much flavor as you would if you add them at the beginning. And that because fresh, fresh herbs don't need that same attention because they're fresh, they'll infuse a lot faster because the oils are like right there, they're, they're not dried. So if you're using fresh herbs, you toss them in kind of towards the end of cooking, but dried herbs towards the beginning. So I think I will add some Italian herb seasoning, you can add basil, you can add oregano, um, parsley, or you can just leave it just simple and plain. Um, they were almost, this usually just takes a couple of minutes. See, it's kind of getting loose. And you do want to be careful because the tomatoes, they tend to splatter and actually get my spoon. So feel free to ask any questions. If you have any questions, I'm going to look back while I'm waiting. Um, yep. ask, ask any questions you have about pantry cooking. I love, I've always loved cooking for my pantry and trying to base, oh, see we're starting. See it's starting to bubble just a little bit around the garlic. It's 
so we're getting there. The thing is, it's okay if it, it turns a slightly darker color, you just don't want it to burn. If it gets too dark and burn, you gotta throw it out. So, um, but what I was saying is I always love to cook for my pantry. I always considered it kind of a challenge to see how long I could go between going into the supermarket. Even before I started um, the food blog and my website, so I, I'm trying to think, actually my husband, I think my husband's the one that called it my superpower. Okay, so see, I'd like to get a couple more. The ones in the center are, let me get the ones around. See, now these, these guys are around the edges. Where's the edges start? Sometimes you might have to move your pan around to make sure it's like right over the burner. But when my husband and I were first married, and we had just had our son, he was a tiny little baby, my husband left his job to go work for an internet company. And back then, the internet was just, it was like the, you know, the Wild Wild West. It was just starting up. There, was, there were a ton of internet companies that were cropping up. So he went from making money to, we made a lot of money on paper, but back in those days, they didn't have any money. It was, that's how I think they got everyone to work for them, is the idea that it was gonna be this big, huge thing. So I had to change the way I shopped, I had to change the way I cooked, to stretch things out a lot further. And so that's kind of, I think, how it forced me to really make use of pantry. Okay, so almost, we're so close. A little bit more of the outside ones. Mmm, you can kind of start smelling it. it. smells so good and garlicky. Oh, okay, Alexa, off. Okay, so you want to make sure you do this really slowly and carefully. All the I'm using obviously the pureed ones, but you can use whole ones. Um, if you like it really chunky, you can use the diced ones. I would prefer like the pureed or the whole. And if you're using whole, you can use your hands to gently, basically squeeze to break them up before you add them. And then just stir this around. The olive oil is gonna help kind of emulsify and melt into the tomatoes and create a looser sauce. Not to mention a really more flavorful sauce because you don't want your, your marinara sauce to just taste like tomatoes. You want to build depth of flavor. Okay, so now that this is incorporated, I'm gonna add, let's see. Oh, that smells really good. And also when you use dried herbs, you want to make sure that you break them up in your fingers before you add them because that opens them up too and helps them release more flavor. So we're just gonna add, we just add a little bit. You're gonna add less than you would normally of like fresh herbs. We're gonna do, there we go. Do this. And then you're gonna bring it to a simmer and simmer it for about 10 minutes. And then you'll taste it. You know, the, the really important thing about cooking is to taste. Taste, taste, taste as you go because you're the only one that knows what taste flavors you like. If you want it spicy, you can add some red pepper flavor. Take it to... Can you pull it from the Oh. Okay, so... Let's see. Okay, so we're going to do the tomatoes. Get them a little bit so see they're starting. Now don't worry, they do kind of um, spread just a little tiny bit. But, oh my, they're gonna be so good. Okay, so we're gonna put them back in. I'm gonna get them a little bit more brown. Alexa, set timer for three minutes. That's what they look like in three minutes. Three minutes, starting now. And I lost my train of thought. What was I talking about with the tomatoes? I can't remember now. But, yeah, this is basically what the sauce is super easy. And then make sure, oh, I don't know. I started to tasting it. So I'm gonna add a little pinch of salt. A little bit of pepper. Like I said, when you taste, you can adjust the flavor. So if you want it to be spicy, you can add a little bit of red pepper flakes. If you want to make it creamy, if it's, sometimes marinara sauce can be too pungent for people because if you don't, you're not a huge fan of tomatoes or you just want like a mellower sauce, you can add some cream. And it's not marinara sauce anymore, but it's, based on what you like to eat and the flavors that really speak to you. So that's what's important. And it's always taste, 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 taste as you go. So we're just gonna simmer that away. Feel free to ask any questions you have. Okay. Ready. So see, now it's simmering. Okay, Alexa, set timer for 10 minutes. Second timer, 10 minutes, starting now. 
So you this usually need a timer. What? <laughs> what did you say? Oh. Anyway. Um. So we'll wait for the meatballs to be done. The meatballs might finish before the marinara sauce is. So I just need to set them aside because again, with the meatballs, you're just wanting to get them brown and kind of start the cooking process. You don't want to put raw meatballs right into the sauce. That this smells so good. This smells amazing. And if you have added veggies, you want to saute veggies separately in a separate pan and then add them at the end once this is all cooked. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so it's just gonna sit and simmer. When the meatballs are done, I'll set them aside, and when the marinara sauce is all finished, I'll finish the meatballs off in the sauce. Usually give that 10 minutes, a little bit less. Um, I like to cut them open to make sure that they're fully cooked inside, so I'll take one and cut them open, which is why it's really important to form the meatballs and make them all the same size, because you want them to cook uniformly. So if you want to make them big, they will definitely take longer. If you make them small, they'll take less time. But however you want to shape your meatballs, just make sure they're all uniform, because you don't want Small is cooking faster, bigger ones taking longer, and it will throw kind of everything off. And, and other uses, there are so many uses for meatballs. You can double the recipe if you're in a crowd. You can turn it into meatball sandwiches, obviously put it over spaghetti. You can just serve it with a big side of like crusty bread slathered with butter. Um, if you are looking to be a little healthier, you can serve it over uh, zucchini noodles or roasted spaghetti squash. Alexa, off. You can even freeze the meatballs. They freeze really well. So what you want to do is after you finish cooking, you'd want to complete the cooking in the oven or on the stove. You wouldn't want to put them in the sauce. So you could complete the cooking in the oven or the stove and then put them on a sheet pan or a plate if you don't have room in your freezer for a sheet pan. You just want to make sure they lay flat. When they're totally frozen, then you can add them to a Ziploc bag. And I always like to make sure I write what they are on the Ziploc bag. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're getting there, so I'm gonna kind of roll them over here. Yeah, you always wanna make sure you write, I always write the date that I made something and what it is on the Ziploc bag. So because these are pork, pork doesn't brown as much as like a ground beef would. So, but you can see that they're starting to get a little bit of color and they smell amazing. And that's like the vegetable sauce that comes out just a little bit, but don't, like it's, it's so good. When you add them to your marinara sauce, it just kind of like melts into the marinara sauce. Um, or you can just serve the meatballs as is, like in a big bowl with tons of Parmesan cheese on top. Oh, look at how gorgeous these look. Okay, so we're gonna put these back in. And as you can see, they're not exactly round. Don't worry about it. You know, I think if you have kids at home, my kids started helping me in the kitchen, honestly, as old as they could. I think they were like, you know, as soon as they could hold a spoon, they were in the kitchen helping me. This is a really great product to make with kids. Alexa, set timer for two minutes. I mean, obviously, depending on their age, you'll need to monitor them because you wouldn't want like super young kids to think they could like lick their fingers after after they've been forming the meatballs. But if they're older kids, have them form the meatballs. Kind of big old meatball party. This smells amazing. So as it cooks, my grandmother, who is part Italian, her secret was always to add a little sugar to take, sometimes tomatoes can have a little bit of a bitter taste. And so she loved to make her marinara sauce on the sweeter side. I highly recommend if you think it tastes a little too bitter, add a little bit of granulated sugar and mix it back in. It takes it, takes it to a whole new level, it's so good. But I always do that at the very end. So this is just kind of, yeah, this is just going to kind of hang out. I'm trying to think of what else. So I talked about the meatballs. I talked about all the things you can make with the meatballs. So you can see it's a really super easy recipe. It comes together really fast. You can make the marinara sauce. You can make a huge batch of this and you can freeze it or you can store it in your fridge. In your refrigerator will probably last a couple of days, maybe three days, four days. But you can also make batches and store in your freezer. It freezes really beautifully. 
If you add cream, it doesn't freeze honestly as well. I found that dairy products just don't freeze. I mean, obviously ice cream freeze is great, but when you use cream, they tend not to freeze as well. But if you just cook it as is like this, like a straight marinara sauce, it freezes really beautifully. You can freeze the meatballs, you can make big batches of meatballs and freeze them for later. You can use any ground meat, any combination of ground meat. Um, someone was asking me earlier about a veggie option. I've heard that if you do either uh, quick cooking oats and like mushrooms or mushrooms and quinoa. I haven't tried it, but I've heard that that's actually a really good option if you wanna make veggie meatballs. is our meatballs. I think the meatballs are probably done. Alexa, off. Uh, who, who has an Alexa? Aren't they amazing? I love, oh my gosh, I love them so much. Okay, so I think these are as done as I want them to be, honestly. So I'm going to finish them up. And honestly, if you find that your meatballs are looking like, okay, they're totally done, you don't actually have to spend that much time with them in the sauce. And basically you put them in the sauce long enough to heat them up if they've been sitting off the side for a while. So I think I'm gonna go and finish this up because I think the sauce is probably gonna take like another 10 minutes. Unless you guys have any questions or comments. Alrighty. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Again, I'm Lisa from The Menu For You. This is the Spanish meatballs with marinara. I will post the recipe um, later. It actually was in one of my fall e-cookbooks. So I'll post the recipe and I will let you guys know when it's up. It should be up on the website um, later today because I know if you were on my Instagram feed, I posted the ingredients over in my stories. So I will post the recipe. And if you have any questions, if you have any other, you know, struggles when cooking for your pantry or need my help, I am happy to help you however I can. You can send me a PM. You can comment on this video. You can go over my Instagram feed. I'm going to for you and comment over there too. So I'm here to help. Stay well, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.